Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. We are here talking today uh, with a friend of ours from Intel, Alan Clampett. Uh, Alan, what would you say, what is your exact title and role at Intel today? Uh, exact the, the role at Intel today. It is a technical marketing engineer for uh, the, I guess you call the next unit computing uh, business group. Um, we've just got uh, the new, uh, my kind of overall um, business group is uh, CC, was it CCG, CCD? Yeah, a lot of those, a lot of those acronyms don't make sense to me, and I deal with yeah, those all the time. It's Consumer <laughs> Computer Group, so CCG, I believe it okay. is. Yeah. It's what um, we we turned into when we moved the mobile group into uh, um, kind of one combined group for all computing for for I guess consumer computing. You could look at it that way. Okay, all right. How long how long have you been? I, I guess since the beginning of the Nook. Uh, you know, product line. Have you been working on that project? Yes. Well, I was not the first uh, technical marketing engineer to actually be uh, doing the NUX. That was uh, uh, another TME called uh, Mark Joe's. Um, I came in on it kind of uh, after we started ramping down the motherboard desktop motherboard business. Right. So, and and the f field I was doing in that, I was the uh, kind of the press kit TME. Uh, for all of our performance boards back in the day. Right, yep. Uh, so, you know, the last one we did was the Z87. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Z87. Uh, I think it was, uh, what was it, Styler? I think we... I don't ever remember the code names of those products, no. Yeah, uh, they're, it's already <laughs> starting to fade for me, too, so... It happens, it uh, happens. It's, yes, it does, it does. So, uh, But yeah, I, I basically I took over the role as the consumer um, uh, NUC TME, and what that means is that I get uh, all the stuff that are not vPro or designed for commercial side of the house, which would be your Maple Canyon, which is the one that is uh, the Broadwell one that just got released. Yep. Uh, I'm doing Rock Canyon, and I also own uh, Force Canyon, which is our Bay Trail-based entry-level uh, NUC. That actually leads me into the, to the next question. As you sit there now, you know, we, we did our review of the, of the Broadwell NUC that went up last week, and... Where, where do you guys internally view the Nook as a as a ecosystem today? Is it something where you view it as we want to have an entry level, a mid range, and kind of a performance edge product? Uh, and, and kind of where do you view it in the you know the next handful of years? I guess what's the what are the goals for it in general? Well, the goal kind of to answer that one first is to keep expanding the the new kind of. Uh, um, uh, market space because uh, we've never done, I mean, the smallest we've done previous to this was the uh, 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 mini ITX space boards. Yep. And I think we were the ones that first came out with the thin mini ITX boards, which are used in your, your all-in-ones. Um, so kind of at the, the, before we actually found out that we were uh, disbanding the, the desktop motherboard uh, group, and uh, we actually had started looking at what can we actually do to make the smallest computer, desktop computer possible. And the only way to do that is using the, the Ultrabook uh, technology right. that's out there. And, and you, you're, we wanted to make it so it was still what we kind of had our roots on, which was a, a kit form. You could actually build it up like you would do any test, desktop motherboard. Uh, but, of course, there's limitations to that because of how small the form factor is, sure. what you can actually do to provide uh, you know, you know, slots and, and right. things to actually put stuff in. So what it came down to is, you know, what we have right now is memory, um, storage, uh, and it used to be Wi-Fi. But now for all of our, our consumer boards going forward uh, for Nux, we're going to be putting, you know, uh, wireless down. So you right. will not be able to actually hold it above our heads. <laughs> I, I like the implementation of having it uh, on the PCB. It's one less thing you have. It's one less thing somebody has to remember to purchase, and it makes it smaller. It takes up less space, which is obviously one of the benefits when you're building. Uh, you know, when you guys are putting together a platform like this, you're trying to get it as short as you can, and you're trying to adjust form factors in such a way. Um, I, I have, you know, my experience with the Nook has been extremely positive since the beginning. Um, you know, as we saw the initial, I guess the first one was an Ivy Bridge, and we went to a Haswell base, and then to a to Broadwell, where we're at now. Uh, if you had to, if you look back at the Nook landscape as it exists now, what is kind of your favorite implementation of it? Is it 
you know, uh, uh, it could even be a non Intel product. Someone, another partner that maybe took the four by four form factor, did something with it. What, what, what kind of stands out to you as, uh, as your maybe Intel's finest moment in the nook, uh, arena thus far? Well, I would think that, um, right now, uh, my favorite is rock Canyon. Uh, but that kind of leads us into what's actually coming up, which I, I think you're actually interested into and, uh, the, you know, your, your viewers are also interested in one of the things that, um, I can't talk about, and we're going to actually have a replacement for, uh, our force Canyon, mm -hmm. which will be based on Brasswell. Um, I think some of the new features that we're able to put in there, uh, will make it, um, maybe even a better home theater PC than rock Canyon mm. is. Uh, you still won't have the graphics and the uh, the compute power that you get with a, a core core based one, right. but uh, uh, Brasswell I think is going to be a big improvement over what you have for Bay Trail. Interesting. Um, so I'm kind of looking for that, and you know, um, it, it's it's coming up. Um, uh, that's about you know the most I can actually talk about it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, Rock Canyon. Um, with what we actually have right now, the Core i3 and Core i5, and then hopefully very shortly the sooner release Core i7, which you know we talked about at uh, at uh, CES. Right. If as we look at the uh, the Broadwell iteration of the Nook that we have here, what are the primary changes in this versus even the Haswell generation? And we know it's a little bit thinner. Um, anything else stand out in terms of feature or hardware changes or performance changes in your mind? Uh, well, the, the, the kind of the three top ones I would say is the charging port. We've never put that on. We used to have it on our desktop boards and we wanted to get it into our, uh, the Nux also, uh, the removable lid. So people can actually do their own 3d printing and, and oh, right. expand it because we have, you know, additional, uh, headers on the board that you can actually, uh, uh, you know, cable up and, and put in there. Uh, we have specifically an NFC header. Uh, that we didn't have. We have a an alternate power port that's in there that you can use to power things in a board uh, if you want to do a circuit uh, kind of design. Um, on Maple Canyon, kind of interesting that that we didn't get and we just couldn't fit in our uh, the Rock Canyon is what we call the high speed uh, custom solution uh, port, and we actually have uh, uh, four PCI Express lanes on uh, uh, basically a, a dedicated header with an additional SATA port. Um, so you could cable that up uh, onto a, uh, a card that actually would break it out to a, a standard PCI Express um, uh, by 16 uh, slot and put a graphics card in there, or put additional um, like a, a network card. So you could probably do a, um, uh, a quad uh, um, uh, gigabit uh, network huh. card um, or... Let's see what else could you what else whatever PACI device I should normally fit in right. uh, you can you can put in this slot and um, uh, we've actually have uh, contracted outside of of uh, our group to actually get uh, one of these breakout cards made and our goal with that the idea is to actually be able to provide the design the schematics and the layout so anybody can actually then take it and uh, make their own uh, design based off of that and you know do their own expansion that way right. we're kind of this is kind of like the roadmap that we want to do to help drive uh the expansion of and the idea of the uh, removable lid and the expansion, you know, use thereof. It, that actually is is part of the the next question, right? Is do do you think that you know when, when we met with you at CES and we talked about the uh, the removable lid and the expansion ports and the capability, and you guys had some mock-ups and some demos of what could happen there? Did you expect more? to happen in that field already up to this point, right? We don't have any, like as today, there's no ability for us to kind of go out and buy a replacement lid that has NFC on it or um, that has, you know, PCI Express or storage or a projector or something else on it. Did you guys kind of expect more immediacy from the ecosystem for that? Or did you expect to have to do these reference designs and push people along? Um, what we've actually found is, is if we don't put some, um, stake into it, um, the, the, the third party vendors that are out there that could actually, you know, really add, um, um, some really interesting features to the NUC, mm -hmm. uh, don't feel, um, 
what's the best way to describe it? They, they, they would like to actually ha- see that Intel is actually uh, going to follow through because, you know, we've actually done in the past where we've, we've come out with something and then we've like, it, it, we didn't get the traction and immediately folded. Right. Well, with us, we see it as that if we want to keep driving the NUC ecosystem, we have to actually show that we have some skin in the game. Hmm. And, and one of the things is, is that, you know, um, you know, come out with different designs ourselves, show that it is possible. And, and that, that may be part of it, too, is, is that no one really thinks about what's the capability that, that we actually have for headers, uh, either on the, the Rock Canyon, the Maple Canyon, uh, uh, Broadwell, and Um, But when we actually show it um, at different events and stuff like that, this is what you could do. That right. gets their, you know, creative juices, you know, flowing. And then they'll go ahead and say, oh, well, we can do this. And that sort of happened uh, with the Hapage uh, one where – We'd shown it, and they, they're they the ones that actually came up with, with the design with their uh, USB um, uh, TV tuner in there. Oh, right. And, yeah, so we didn't actually ask them, hey, can you do this? They're the ones that actually stepped up. So uh, they see this as a way to actually – because they – you know, we – I think everybody talks about the NUC as being a great home theater PC uh, device because it's small, it's quiet, uh, you can hide it out of the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things that's not in there is any type of way to actually get broadcast um, uh, TV True. and record it. With the TV tuner that they're providing with the expandable lid, you can. Interesting. Um, my, own, my, my only other complaint about this device is that it no doesn't – yeah, here we go. You ready for this? It doesn't. Yeah, it looks too similar to all the previous generations. Do you guys have any ideas on what you can do to make this it, to change the design some, or are you trying to stick to that four by four form factor motherboard to a certain degree? Like, could you get uh, a round one? Could you do? Could you do some kind of design things to it to to kind of you know get people more interested in it? Because I think a lot of people they look at this and they'll say that looks just like the previous years and notice that eh, there's a CPU change and maybe that's all there is to it and it's kind of hard to get um, a year after year or generation after generation buzz associated with the device. Uh, yeah, you basically you're describing there's not enough design change to actually get people yeah. excited. Yeah. Um, well. I, I guess I can kind of fall back on what we actually were doing for desktop boards, right? We would come out with a next generation based off the new chipset, new processor, and such like that, mm-hmm. and try to actually differentiate it by putting uh, additional SATA ports um, or whatever a feature that we actually think that the, the public would be interested in actually paying extra for, mm-hmm. or even keeping the cost the same. And we'll just, you know, cut our, our margins even thinner just to be able to actually sell more units that way. Uh, I mean, you know, look at what we're doing right now. We're adding in a uh, wireless free. We're not, we basically did not increase the price for the, the rock Canyon NUC over the Wilson Canyon NUC, but you're getting the wireless basically our, the top end wireless NIC card um, that our wireless group makes, the 7265AC. Right. Uh, there's nothing better than that unless you go to wide gig, right? That, I think sure. that would be the next generation we could actually move to. Yeah. Do you think uh, the M.2 port in this, the M.2 port that supports both SATA and PCI Express, uh, you know, my kind of initial reaction when you guys sent the review units, you sent along uh, a Samsung chipset based PCI Express SSD. It was running at like over a gigabyte per second. Do you think something like that is overkill for a, a platform of this, uh, I guess, size, this kind of, uh, you know, kind of home theater base for it? Um, <laughs> maybe, uh, I would see that be more for, uh, like it, once we get like a, a core i seven with Iris and uh, you can use right. it more for gaming, you want actually want to load levels of, you know, tremendously fast and True. and get back into the game ahead of somebody. Uh, I think you've complained before. I think I've heard in the podcast where you, you could not spawn back when you're playing games and then you get killed in, in immediately. And you're basically cannon fodder when you're playing your, your first person shooter games. Amongst other reasons. Uh, yes. Yes, yes. And, and, you know, lack of skill. I mean, last right, time I really correct. played first-person shooters was back in um, uh, Quake um, Arena. That was that was my game of choice. Yeah. Uh, we used to – there's a group of us used to play every night after work. Uh, we'd get on our headsets and, and, you know, just start, you know, talking trash back and forth <laughs> to one another. And Then we got uh, old, Alan. Got then very got good old. at it. Matter of fact, uh, one time when we were – we went out and, and we did a challenge at uh, PDX LAN mm. and we – we were take on all comers and I think we got finally set it up 
around three around three p.m. in the afternoon, and we played straight with no breaks until nine thirty, and that's when we finally got beat, and we got beat by in the last like three seconds by one flag. Uh, and I can make no was, such claims to to have a a streak of such great magnitude as that on any of my gaming adventures. So. And, and the interesting thing was, is when we did this, they actually had done the night before um, kind of a, a quake off of who's the best quake players, right? right. And um, they would basically had them ranked. And it got to the point where they had to have the number one, number two, number, th- number no, excuse me, number five and number eight. Is that right? I think that was right. Uh, before they actually beat our team. Um, oh. and so, yeah, it was, it was quite a cue on our part. Um, just, you know, playing every night and, and enjoying the, uh, the game of, uh, of, uh, well, first a, person shooter like that. Hey, if you want to play, if you want to pick up Quake Arena again, I think this would be able to handle it. I think oh, you'd be yes. able to get away with that on this. So let me, let me get you out of here on, on, on one more question for you based on how much you can say what i mean what are we going to see more iterations on the nook platform throughout 2015 is that something you know we we know about skylake we know what what has been publicly stated about skylake i do we assume that there's going to be a nook based on that platform and then what other changes can people look forward to uh in this platform Right. Well, you know, the standard that, uh, that Dan Snyder would always uh, say is we can't talk about uh, unreleased <laughs> products, right? Correct. That's just kind of the standard. Uh, but we have actually talked about at, at CES, so it's kind of already out there, is we're going to have a, a um, replacement for Force Canyon. And I, I think I said that at the beginning of this, right. uh, which is based off of uh, 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 Braswell is the, the process we're looking at at that one. Um we are planning to move ahead with, and do a Sky Lake. Um, we're we're really looking and very interested in, in the capabilities of that uh, SOC uh, and what it's going to be able to provide because we're going to have DDR4, which, you know, of course, that's going to be a, a charge to the uh, the integrator uh, right. or the end consumer because we don't know at that point what the crossover point will be for uh, DDR3L and uh, DDR4. Right. I think I've heard something like it's going to be the first quarter of uh, 2016. Hmm. Um, so there's going to be a little charge up front, I think, to uh, early adopters with the uh, with the Skylake-based uh, NUC. Um, I do know that that you know, other companies are are coming out with NUC uh, designs. Uh, you know, Gigabyte uh, have their bricks, and they've really pushed the uh, the number of different models that they actually have. Uh, you know, way beyond what we have, um, uh, because kind of when we, the, our thought was is like, let's get it out there. This is a you know a new design. We'll kind of test the waters, and then we're going to provide what it would be kind of the entry and kind of mid range cost to try to uh, build up sales and, and kind of get the idea of mm-hmm. the knock out there and what it can be used for. Um, I, it's, I've, I've seen it actually being used in um, a 3d printer. Now uh, I've seen it used in uh, uh, like a, a, a Coke dispensing machine. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it, you, wherever you need a small high performance right. uh, computer, it's it's a fantastic device for that, um, and that's one of the things that makes me excited about uh, you know coming into work and and working on the NUC and you know what's the next features we can actually include uh, in the NUC uh, moving forward. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of a I, I was kind of skeptical at first um, because I was all you know gung ho for desktop and, and right. the performance desktops, uh, but yeah, the NUC kind of kind of won me over, and uh, I'm a convert. <laughs> Very cool. Well, uh, Alan, we re- definitely appreciate your time, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have you back on whenever we get our hands on those other Nook devices later in the year, 2016, or whenever it happens to be. But I- I'm sure you're going to be getting some more uh, later this year. There you go. There you go. So now we know we have a little bit of a tease of what to expect coming forward. Definitely. Uh, well, thanks for your time, Alan. Talk to you later. Thank you.